So let's go back to, to step one, Mitch. We got this house. You and your team are going to buy the house. You're going to fund it with, with private money. Are you, are you, go ahead. We, we, were, we, we were in step one. Step one was, what can I sell this house for? I, got, I, I know I can buy it for, for 110. So for easy math, let's just say, now I know that I can sell it for 110. I like to shoot for 50%. I like to buy my houses for 50%. Not really because it, it, I mean, it's a nice margin. It might be a, a little overzealous to go at 50%, but here's the thing. I can divide by two really good, Jay. So I, that's why I go with it. You know, 110, I need to do it for around 55. <laughs> I, can, I can divide by two like a son of a gun, man. I, I'm a good, no. there ain't nobody better at dividing by two than me, okay? There you go, I got so you. I divide, so let's say I get it and I get a lot of them for that. Sometimes I get them for even less. Now, keep in mind, I won't go over 65%, but let's say so. I divide by two, 110. I say, I'm trying to pick this house up for 55000 So let's say I do. So I get this guy to agree to 55. I go to my private lender and say, look, I got this house I can sell based on the rents. I can sell for 110 owner finance. Will you loan me 57? I always borrow $2,000 more at least. And why do I do that? Because it takes me $2,000 to find this guy. And if I'm buying 100 houses a year and, and I'm spending 2000 to find every one of them, that's $200,000 a year that, that if I don't get it back, I'm leaving laying around in my deals. And it took me a long time to figure out why I always seem so strapped, you know what I mean, or, or more strapped. Because I was leaving this $2,000. So I borrowed fifty seven. I put $2,000 in my left-hand pocket, which is tax deferred because it's borrowed money. And my payment's about three fifty for easy math, okay? Now this guy owes me eight fifty, and he gives me twelve thousand down. So he gives me twelve thousand down. I put that twelve thousand in my right pocket. So between my right and my left pocket, I got fourteen thousand dollars in my pocket. And and my buyer owes me eight fifty a month, and I owe my lender three fifty. So I'm keeping five hundred in the middle, and I'm and I'm not a landlord. I, I, it's not my toilet. There's not going to be a phone call saying, Hey, I'm the air conditioner man. And you got to give me some of that 500. It's not going to happen. Matter of fact, if you're out there in the audience and you have a mortgage payment, I want you to try experiment with me today. Call up the mortgage company and tell them your air conditioner doesn't work. And you want them to send someone over and see what they tell you. Right. <laughs> exactly. So the private money that you're borrowing, are you borrowing that unsecured or secured? Non-recourse collateral only. And here's the nice little hit and tip. Oh, wait a minute. You got, you got to tell the viewers and listeners what you just said and what that means. Well, it's collateral only, which means you either get paid the, the terms that we agreed on. I send you a check every month as agreed, or you get my house. Right. And, so there, so the, and if you don't like my house, when people go, well, is your credit any good, Mitch? I say, that's irrelevant. Uh, you should make this loan to Charles Manson when he was alive because the best thing that'll ever happen to you is that you don't get paid because you're going to get my $110,000 house for $57,000. Yeah. Uh, 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 now I understand you don't want a house, but that's pretty good security. You know what I mean? As far as risk reward goes, this is really, and we got to be careful here because these sec rules, right? You can't guarantee nothing. There's nothing for sure, but that's a pretty, pretty bold risk reward scenario where you loan someone, you loan Mitch Steven 57000 and if Mitch Steven doesn't pay you, you get a $110,000 house. That ain't bad. Yeah. So when you borrow the money from the private lender, you're giving your private lender a first mortgage, yes? Yes, a first lien. And I borrow my money. Here's my terms. You might want to write this down. I borrow my money right now. I have $14 million of private people's money, uh, uh, 8% interest only. Five years, non-recourse, collateral only loan. Non-recourse being if I don't pay you, you can't sue me, you can't give me a judgment, you can't, you can't take me to court. You just gotta foreclose on my house. But you know, Jay, if I ever couldn't make my payments, I'll walk the deed over to someone. You know what I mean? I'm not gonna scream, scream out. Those people that collect money and don't make payments, those those people need to be hung. Back in the old west, they'd have tarred and feathered them and shot them.
<laughs> That's right. So you, you give your private lender the first mortgage. Now you take that property and you're going to sell it, owner finance to a buyer. So what? Uh, so uh, how does the security work on that? So this is how it looks. I, I, my, my lender gives me $57,000 in the scenario in a first lien position on that house. And then he allows me to wrap it. That's another scenario. That's another one of my terms. It must be wrappable. You will allow me to sell this house on payments and you'll allow me to keep my loan with you, Mr. Private Lender. And they all agree. So, all right, so, 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 so let's, when, I sell, when I sell the house for 110 with 12,000 down, they still owe me 98. But my, my note is in the second position behind my lender. In first position. And now your note is in second position uh, from your buyer to you. Right? Yes, it, it, it's a very special mortgage. It's called a wraparound mortgage. And, and in that mortgage, it discloses to my buyer his risk that, that, that Mitch Stephen owes someone too, and there could be problems if Mitch Stephen didn't pay. That's, that wraparound mortgage discloses who's owed, how much is owed, how long it's owed, everything to, to my buyer. Now, you think that would scare the hell out of people, right? It, I, I, I've done it thousands and thousands of times. Uh, yeah. People accept the fact that they have to, to, to make some concessions when they can't get a loan on their own. You know what I mean? Exactly. Obviously they do. And yeah. so that wraparound, why they call it a wraparound mortgage is my mortgage to my buyer, he sends me a payment. I send a payment to my lender. He doesn't send me a payment. I still got to send the payment to my lender, but my mortgage wraps around my private lender's mortgage. It wraps around it. <clears throat> exactly. It wrap around mortgage. Exactly. So now uh, there's one thing you said a moment ago that some of the viewers and listeners are probably scratching their head about. And that is you, you got a five year note from your private lender on, on buying the, the house. Now you're selling it on a 30 year note. What happens after the first five years is up and gone? Okay, well, let's just take the let's take the worst case scenario, which, by the way, I want to tell you right up front, this has never happened to me, it, it, and, it, and I never planned for it to happen. But the worst case scenario is I put 2000 in my pocket when I got the loan. I put 12000 in my pocket when I got the down payment, and I collect 500 a month positive cash flow, the difference between 850 and 350 every month for 60 months, which is $30,000. So between the down payment and the other thing and the in the payments, I've collected thirty plus fourteen, forty-four thousand dollars. And if I have to hand the deed back to my lender at, after sixty months, that's as bad as it gets. Game Thank over. You. Made forty-four thousand dollars in a house over five years. I'm done. Now that's never happened in my life because I know if I hand those if I hand those houses back to my lenders, they're going to quit lending to me. So it's never happened to me. But if that's the worst thing that would happen, everybody's fine. Okay? Exactly. But now you can sell these notes. You can refinance these notes. You can get, you can, you can um, replace one lender with another lender. It would take 17 and a half years before the people that owe me owe the same amount to me as I owe my lender. What would this house be worth in 17 years? What would this note be worth? How liquidatable? What's the average mortgage in America last eight years? Something happens. They refi. They die, they pay off, they win the lottery, they pay it down. So, you know, this, things happen. Um, if you think that you're going to collect for 30 years on a mortgage, you're wrong. But let's also yeah. look at this, though. If you go the long way, $500 a month, this is where the wholesalers are killing themselves. Because they haven't learned how to find private money, right? They're doing a one-time shot. Now, what is the average wholesale fee? I just made $14,000 up front on this owner finance strategy. Do you think that's a pretty reasonable average wholesale fee? I think it might even be a little high. It actually is high. The, the last statistic I heard, and, and I'm in this mastermind with 150 high-end real estate investors and a bunch of them are wholesalers. I mean, some of them do 1,000 wholesale deals a year. Average is $12,000 across the board. Okay, so look at this scenario. You wholesalers are going to make you sick right now because you haven't mastered the art of raising private money. You are leaving the back half 
on the, you're walking away from the back half. And let's look at the back half. I'm owed $500 positive cash flow, of which I am not a landlord, for 360 months. That's $180,000 friggin' dollars that you're not going to be able to put your hands on or even have the chance to get because you haven't learned how to raise private money. And that ought to scare the living hell out of you. You ought yeah. to ask yourself, what the hell am I doing flipping houses and wholesaling houses when if I own or finance them and if I could master the art of raising private money, I can make an extra $180,000 on every transaction. Average. Okay. So there's no, there, when I tell you I'm a multi, 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 multi millionaire, you can figure it out real easy that I'm not lying. You do a hundred houses and at the end of it, every one of them owes you 150 to 180,000 in the future. You become a multimillionaire within, you know, 20, 30 transactions. I tell you what, Mitch, when we look at your balance sheet and we look at accounts receivable, that's yeah. probably a pretty big number. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I'm just hoping they don't ever get to that thing where you can Google Mitch Stevens net worth because I don't really want people to know. <laughs> I hear you, man. So on, on the deal here, uh, so that's a that's a good point on the wholesale. Like these houses that you're buying, you're doing you did 88, you say in the past year. These houses, are you buying them, and and uh, are you rehabbing no, it? No, my favorite strategy of all time, and you're gonna love this. Buy it, don't fix it. Owner finance it for double, and watch the guy making you payments. Go over budget, fixing up your collateral. It's the most beautiful plan on the planet. Right. On the planet, because where's all the risk, Jay? It's always in the rehab. You know, I I, I, I don't invent much. I invented, maybe I invented the OFV, and I also invented the second half of this bumper sticker. Now, we all know the first half of the bumper sticker. It says, you make your money when you buy. Well, Mitch Steven printed the other sentence at the bottom, and you lose it in the rehab. Right. You lose all that money you made when you bought it, you lose it all in the rehab. So if you don't do a damn rehab, but look, Jay, it's really hard to have materials walk off your job when you don't rehab a job. That's true. People, people can't go over budget, charge you double when you don't give them a job. People, That's right. And, and how many people, I wish I could see a show of hands. How many people that do a rehab go over budget? If your hand's not right up now, you're a liar or you just haven't done, you've only done like one carpet rehab and that's it. Because everyone I know goes over, including me, after 22 years and thousands of deals, I still can't hit a budget because you just never know what you're getting into. And, and, and when you don't do a rehab, you, you can't go over budget. And That's it's so right. much more fun to watch these other people go over budget. Because I, I, I sell them the house. I said, look, when I sell you the house, it's going to take 20000 to repair it. They go, oh, no, I can do it for ten. I said, no, it's going to cost you 20000 I know. They said, no, I can do it for ten. You know, they're in it. You know, about six months later, they're in it for $18,000 and they're still $4,000 short. And it's so much more fun watching them go over budget on their rehab, fixing up my collateral than it is for me to go over budget trying to flip a house. Yeah. So, Mitch, the viewers and listeners, here's what they want to know now. Mitch Stevens, where in the world can I find houses for 50 cents on the dollar and sell them as is? Where there is chaos. I live where there's chaos. You know, so people go, well, the market's really hot. Who the hell selling their house for, for um, you know, 50% off? Well, the market's not hot for people that are dying, divorcing, have health issues, getting transferred. You know, maybe they won the lottery. You know, not all chaos is bad. You know, when you win the lottery for tens of millions of dollars, that's a form of chaos. Now, it can be good or bad, but right at first, it's not bad. Yeah. You know, and people have walked away from things because they got inheritances and they don't need this piece of crap anymore. You know what I mean? Yeah. Or I don't want it. I, or, I, or I have bad memories or something happens in a house that they don't want to face anymore. Death or or or, you know, abuse or some kind of thing. There's a lot of reasons. There's a lot of reasons. And so where where we find these deals is we live where the chaos happens. I live in that chaos. I'm a professional. I'm a professional. I'm like Thigpen. On the on the chart, I just there's just chaos around me all the time. So, what's your favorite marketing method right now for uh, locating motivated sellers? Just outbound calling. Outbound calling. Yeah, um, I've been hearing over the past uh, year more and more high end. Um, Real estate investors such as yourself are doing a lot of outbound calling. So are they, uh, is your team or virtual assistants or whatever doing outbound calling to people that, that already have their house 
like listed as a FISBO? No, we're dealing with people in chaos, people behind on certain on anything. People are getting nuisance and abatements or residential property code violation uh, judgments put on their property. The indicators that people are having problems behind in property taxes, um, uh, 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 filed for a um, loan modification, you know, anything that any hint that they're struggling with the property, then uh, we're calling them. And then we do the postcard mailings and the other touches after we've reached a semi interested party, someone who's not who's answered the phone and hasn't cussed us out. And then yeah. we start staying in touch with them. Uh, a lot less of them. And, and I can stay in touch with them better and have a good conversion rate. Yeah. So you may not know this because you may have a team member doing it, but um, do you know what skip trace service your team is now using to locate people's phone numbers to call them? Yeah, we, we use TLO. TLO. I was going to say TLO is a big one out there. Well, it's not easy to get and you need to, you know, you need to talk to some people before you start applying for this stuff because you don't get many chances. They, they just, if they don't like you, they shut, they, they'll shut you off. Uh, exactly. you know, so you need to learn about how to get approved because if you make any mistakes along the way, you just don't walk back in and reapply. Exactly. Exactly. Um, well, my lands, Mitch, we are just about out of time. And we, you and me could keep going here for another hour or two. Uh, so let me wrap up with uh, some quick fire questions here and then you're going to be able to give away the uh, the free gift that you got um, here, here uh, at the end of the show. So um, um, what's the best advice you got for a new real estate investor that's never done a I think you use the internet to get as much free information as you can. Uh, you always check references on everybody. Once you find, once you find a strategy that then stop looking at everything else and start drilling down. Once you're sure that it's for you, once you're sure that that's the strategy that you're going to do, then stop with the free stuff and, and, and hire someone that's the best at what they do in that strategy or one of the best and pay them because you're either going to pay the street or you're going to pay the mentor and the street's relentless and, and the street will crush you and the stress of the street, learning by the street. You know, I graduated from the Calle U, Jay. La Calle means the street in Spanish. I'm going to get a ring made that says La Calle U. <laughs> Everybody else, I didn't go to college, but I'm going to get a college ring that says La Calle U. And people start showing their ring. I graduated from a and I graduated, I graduated from Alabama. I graduated, I'm going to say I graduated from Kylie, uh, La Calle U, mofos. <laughs> so, so, Mitch, I hear you practicing what you're preaching. And that is, you just said, figure out this core strategy and stick to it. So you would say, would you say your core strategy now and has been for years, find the motivated seller, negotiate the deal, fund it with private money, sell it as is with owner financing? Yeah, you don't always sell it as is because sometimes it makes sense to do some paint. What happens is, is I got a line of houses and I got two good crews and they can only work on two houses at a time. So I got four houses going at a time. The rest of those houses are for sale as is. If I get to them, I'll rehab them. But 50, 60% of them I never get to. Because yeah. I sell them while they're in line as is. I sell them as is while they're in line. So yeah. a lot of people think I don't do rehabs or that I'm against rehabs. I'm not. It makes sense sometimes to put a coat of paint in some carpet because it doesn't cost that much and it ups the value a lot. But, but, but when I got a house that's really major, I don't like to do major, major $50,000 rehabs anymore. I just put a price on it that leaves some room for the other guy and I let him make payments and I'm watching him put $50,000 into my collateral. And it's, and when he gets done, that note is like instantly liquidatable. If I sold notes, I don't sell notes anymore, but you know, yeah, but exactly. do, do the math. If you have 250 people that owe you uh, at least $500 a month, uh, positive cash flow between what you got to pay out and what you collect. How much money is that? 250 yeah, times five. That's $125,000 a month. And pretty good math. That? Can you live out? You think, you think that's enough? You can think you could eat? You think you could take your wife out and buy her a diamond ring every now and then? You know? I love it. I love it. Um, hey, one last question here, Mitch. Uh, these people that are buying from you, what are what are you and your team's favorite marketing methods now for locating buyers of your houses? Um, Facebook Marketplace. Absolutely. I advertise, I advertise 
I advertise wholly in Spanish. If you want to see mine, it's Casas Dueño a Dueño, which means homes owner to owner. And I, I advertise exclusively. Every one of my office has to be bilingual. All my salespeople are bilingual. And I just, that's my market. And that's what I like. And, um, and I know that's my sweet spot. And livecom.com, because when they call my signs, I capture their phone numbers and I got them in, automatically put into a text distribution list through automation. And so right now I have 8,000, Jay, right now if I could pull up my phone and pull up my Livecom account, that's L-I-V-E-C-O-M-M.com, as in live communications. If I could pull it up right now, I could show you where I have 8,756 people that have called my signs that I can text within a second for two cents per person. These are people that called my signs already, direct hits right between the eyes for two cents per person. And I can do it from my phone right now. And I, every time I have a new house come into inventory, I text them a little tiny URL that says, check out my this house that just came into my inventory with owner financing. And I hit send and 8,756 people that have already inquired about my houses get another text with the pictures and everything. And it's amazing. It's amazing thing between the Facebook and that I have. I'm averaging 12% down in nine days on the market. Wow. Nine days on the market. And that's, the, that's averaging the last 200 sales. Wow. What's the, what's that resource again? Tell everybody again, that resource. It's livecom.com. L I V E C O M M.com. And, and awesome. I, invent, I invented it because none of the places would do exactly what I wanted it to do. That has a lot of features. Uh, it has a lot of features that I've been, and we're soon to have voice drop. So you wow. Can, you can mass text. Actually, we can mass text with mail merge now. If you put the buyers, if you put your potential buyers first and last name in the spreadsheet, when it when you send out a mass text, it'll start out with, hey, Jay. Hey, Mike. Hey, John. You know, it looks way more personal. And we have an app on the phone where you make your recordings for every phone number. And we have, um, we're getting ready to have voice drop. So you could do a voice drop to tell them to check their text to go over and look at their email. So you, you could get like three touches and one, hey, I, did you get my text? You know, you do a voice drop. Did you get my text? I sent you an email. It says my name, Mitch Steven, in the subject line. And so they got it. Now, now they got a voice drop, they got a text, and they got an email they got to go check on. Man, that is amazing. Amazing. Thank you so much for sharing the resource. Um, all right, Mitch. Wow. We're out of time, but how about go ahead and give, um, let's give out the information. So you got, we're going to give them uh, what is it about the book you're going to give them? What's the name of the book and what do they get? I'm going to give them the first hundred pages of my life in a thousand houses, failing forward to financial freedom. It's a 400 page book. It has over 215 five-star reviews on Amazon. I'm going to give you that. So you don't, waste your money if you don't like it don't don't buy it but if you're gonna love it if you're interested in this and then i also you know, All right, hang, hang on mitch hang on mitch let's give them the website right here so everybody those of you that are viewing on youtube we've got it right here listed if you're listening uh you know google play or itunes it's w go to to get this first hundred pages of his book go to www.jayconner j-a-y-c-o-n-n-e-r.com forward slash mitch book m-i-t-c-h-b-o-o-k go ahead mitch uh, what else we got for him well I, you know i was gonna say i think you might have a link too um if you're interested in how i do this or you want to drill down more on my angles or my thoughts about this you know i have a 25 hours that we 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 uh i i, I sit down and really try to explain it in depth in a much slower pace and maybe even some pictures and some videos and stuff um, and I think you have a link for that too. Yes. And, uh, and people can get this training from you, uh, digitally, right? Yeah. It's a digital download, 25 hours online. Plus it has a members only website where I, for five years, people have gone, Mitch, is this on the website? I said, no, but I'll put it on there tomorrow for five years. If someone asks for it, I've put it on that, in that members only website. It's very robust these days. Anything from my attorney's to RMLOs, to contracts, to um, how different sales pitches I've used, different sales pitches I've canned because <laughs> of reasons, uh, the new new and changing laws. You know, I, I got unbelievable amount of resources. All the apps I use, 
all the programs I use, all the softwares I use, why I use them. Um, and, and then their competitors, you know, I, I list, you know, you got a lot of choices sometimes, you know, I don't just list what I use. I'll list everyone out there. You pick if you want. Awesome. Okay, folks. So uh, check out Mitch's training. We got a special uh, website here for you at www.jayconner.com forward slash Mitch course, M-I-T-C-H-C-O-U-R-S-E, jayconner.com forward slash Mitch course. Mitch, thank you so much for being here on the show. You are amazing, brother. Any parting comments for our viewers and listeners? No, man, just don't ever quit learning and try to stay around the movers and the shakers and someone starts being negative, you know, listen for about a split second, decide if they got some merit, you know, and then move on to the good stuff. I mean, don't spend a lot of time in the negativity. Stay around people that are bigger than you and, and listen to what they're doing and do what they do. That's awesome, Mitch. Thank you so much. All right, everybody, thank you for viewing in. If you're watching on YouTube, uh, be sure and subscribe. Uh, you can leave comments below. We'll get your questions answered on the, regarding you know, real estate investing. Uh, if you're listening on iTunes or Google Play, be sure and uh, rate us, review us, and uh, we appreciate your feedback. I'm Jay Connor, the Private Money Authority. Look forward to seeing you at the upcoming event. Get on over to jayconnor.com forward slash money podcast. I'll be seeing you soon. Mitch, I'll see you at our mastermind in a few weeks. And thank you so much. Bye for now.